I am excited about my guest, a longtime friend, a good man. David Compellion is with us. And David is an award-winning journalist, vice president, and managing editor of World Net Daily, um, WND. And, and up front, uh, World Net Daily is the publisher of my upcoming brand new book, The Antidote, Heal an American from the Poison of Hate, Blame, and Victimhood, or will be released November 24th. Uh, I'm excited about that. David is editor of Whistleblower Magazine, a widely read columnist. He, um, he's the author of two very important books, The Marketing of Evil and the Sequel and How Evil Works. He's been on Fox News, MSNBC, C-SPAN, CBN, and other TV and radio venues. Everybody and their mama have heard David. His new book, The Snapping of the American Mind, Healing a Nation Broken by Lawless Government and Godless Culture. Uh, we're going to tell you how to get the book. David, good morning, sir. Hey, Jesse. How are you? All is well. Thank you so much for coming on. You know, I'm excited about your book coming out, and you just read the title and the subtitle, and both of our subtitles start with the same word, healing. Yes. So you, you got to get to solutions eventually, and uh, I, I think your book's going to be awesome, and I think we're both laboring in the same vineyard here. we got a lot Absolutely. of healing to do. Absolutely. Are you, um, you are an Armenian? Are you Armenian? Well, Greek and Armenian, the name is Armenian, and the, the heritage I identify with is Armenian because my, uh, my father's side of the family got kind of wiped out in the Armenian genocide, including my, my grandfather and uh, my father's baby sister then, and maybe a hundred other relatives wow. and extended family. So I, I know a lot about it, and there are a lot of lessons to be learned uh, including the fact that the Turks disarmed all of the uh, the Armenians before they did their mass slaughter, so there <laughs> there are lessons we can bring forward to uh, to today. You don't want to give up your your firearms. Of all these years I've known you, I didn't know that part of your history. Yeah, I, you know, Jesse, I'm I'm kind of like you. I I, I okay, you're black, I'm Armenian. Uh, you know, you have an Amerifro. <laughs> I, I don't totally think of myself in I, ethnic identity. Uh, we're, we're God's children. Yeah. You know, Viktor Frankl, the, the famous Jewish psychiatrist who survived Auschwitz, he said there are two, two races of people, only two races of people in the world, the decent and the indecent. So that's how I think of it, and I think you do too. But I do, I have, there are a lot of lessons, as I say, from the Armenian genocide and what led up to it. And, and we are, by the way, seeing it play out again today. I know I'm jumping around, but ISIS uh, is modeled after the Ottoman Caliphate, which is what was perpetrating this jihad on Christians 100 years ago. So what we're seeing today is nothing new. I know, man. It's mind-blowing. Um, my audio engineer here, Andre, is Armenian, and when he heard your name, he said, oh, he's Armenian. And I, and I just, I'm like, no, he's not. I think he's white. And then, huh. <laughs> so that's, yeah, how, I, I, that's so how I knew Andre is here. So he knew that the name was Armenian. And he right. said it was from your grandfather's side. Correct. Yeah. Amazing. I want to get into your book. Uh, when I saw the title of your book, I thought about the insane evil that is uh, accepted in America today and how it can possibly drive people insane to do crazy things. Um, explain the title of the book and why you wrote this to the folks. Well, you know, I was listening to Rush Limbaugh a year or two ago, and uh, he was talking about Obama, and I don't remember what the exact story of the day was, but he's saying, like, Obama, he's like, he's, it seems like he's trying to make people snap yeah. He's, he's deliberately attacking the sanity of the country. He just wants to make people so upset. He wants them to snap. And I was in the middle of writing a book, and, and I, I needed a good verb, 
You know, what, what is happening to America is a snapping. That is a good dramatic verb. And also, Jesse, you know, there was a very famous book uh, about 30 years ago called The Closing of the American Mind. It was a number one bestseller, and it was by a college professor named uh, Alan Bloom. And he said that, and this was like 28 years ago, he says that every college student today, without exception, almost without exception, believes that reality, truth is relative. Yeah. There is no real reality. There is no God. Everything is relative. So it's like, Jesse, you know, you believe 2 plus 2 is 4, but I believe 2 plus 2 is 79. Right. So I accept your reality. You should accept my reality, and then we'll have a happy world, and everything will be fine. And, and that leads to madness. So the snapping of the American mind is kind of a generation later where that kind of worldview has gotten us. There is a God, there is good and evil, and they're both trying to recruit us all the time. And uh, we, we need to know, you know, first and foremost, what we are. And that uh, this whole thing of the Bible and the Ten Commandments, this is not some fairy tale for, for stupid, unscientific people. Yes. The, uh, these are basic laws of life. Just like you jump off a building 10 stories, you're going to die, regardless of what your ideology is about jumping. And we do have laws of life, and we have, after centuries of being blessed by them, we have thrown them out the window in the last generation or two, and uh, that has caused a lot of the snapping sound that we hear. All it, it's, it's not just like the Roseburg shooting, which is the next town up from where I live, where a guy went in and snapped and shot up a classroom of students. There's all kinds of snapping, basically, of people losing their moorings, losing their minds, and uh, losing their happiness all over the country. I have seen over the last six years or so, Rush is absolutely right about Obama and what he's doing. I've seen good people just go off the deep end because they became so frustrated at Obama and what he's doing. It's look as though he, he's going around the country looking for everything that's good and attacking it. And then when you get mad at him <clears throat> and you get mad at him, you uh, point it out. He lies about it, but yet he continue with the frustration. And a lot of people don't know how to handle that type of evil. And I can totally see and have seen when they do snap. They don't go out and kill, as you said, but they do other things that are destructive to themselves. And then Obama said, well, see, I told you they were crazy. And it just confirms him even more so. Right, those right wingers are crazy. They're they're dangerous. Uh, n never mind about you know radical Islam. Those those right wing. You know, it's true because the 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 attack of the left on the sanity of America has been going on for a long time, of course. Okay, yeah. and and the, by the way, this my book is not a a screed. It's it's full of research and studies and 400 endnotes. It's got the research to to prove the point. We we have. You know, abortion, one in three women in America, this is tragic, okay, have an abortion by the age of 45. Well, we have major studies now that show that uh, women who have an abortion are twice as likely to become mentally ill. We ha we, so every area, you know, and you always, you talk about the fatherlessness. Yeah. The left gave us the, the sexual revolution, which is, you know, basically given us this anarchy we have of, of, of wild sexuality, it's driven families apart in conjunction with the, the feminist hatred of marriage and the welfare state and all these things have combined to destroy our families. Fatherlessness is the number one indicator of, you know, better than I do, poverty and imprisonment yeah. and crime. But, but all this has been going on for, for a couple of generations. What Obama has, has brought to the table is he has like taken cans of gasoline and poured it all over this fire that has already been burning in our country, and he's accelerating it. He's he's like an arsonist. He's just like <laughs> he's, he's 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 creating this this conflagration. And I have a chapter. It's maybe my favorite chapter in the book. Uh, it's called Chaos Theory, and Jesse, it's about brainwashing, and I'm showing that when you look at classic, I'm, I'm talking hardcore, you know, wartime, uh, you know, Korean War veteran brainwashing, real, real heavy duty brainwashing, communist uh, activity, 
and you and that's all been broken down by experts and I cite them in the book into you know ten different steps and then those steps can be broken down into kind of three different steps and I break it down into like one or two steps okay and it's not quite so esoteric what Obama is doing by saying you know 22 times that no I can't I can't legalize the dreamers that I'm not a monarch and then he does it and people say but you said 22 times on camera that you can't do that he's I never said that he says, that's the Republicans they're lying I, I never said that that does drive people nuts the stuff that Obama is doing now is accelerating already the 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 you know the de degradation and demoralization of our country that our colleges have been doing and the, and the news media he is like lit a match to it to where we have the the school shootings the, the, the mass shootings are happening more often yeah we have you know young people born in the greatest country on earth the united states of america they they haul off and go to syria so they can become barbarians or sex slaves joining isis so we are snapping more rapidly than ever i am truly excited about this book because america needs a healing and it needed real bad and we need the healing soon sooner rather than later and so we need to have some honest insightful discussion about what's really really going on the book is the snapping of the american mind healing a nation broken by a lawless government and a godless culture by david compellian tell the folks how to get your book and well, why? And tell them why they should get it too. Uh, they should get it because I need to sell books. No, they, <laughs> I, I am very happy with the way this book turned out. I, I, I would like to believe I had a little bit of the, the wind from the good Lord to my back. I, I, I put a book out about every five years. We had The Marketing of Evil in 2005, How Evil Works in 2010. 2015 is time for me to have another book, and I've been working on this one for a long time, and I think it connects the dots as to what's been going on in this country and how to fix it in a way that is unique. And so far, um, the, uh, the reviews, the, uh, the blurbs and so forth are, are, are very strong. So I, I think I, 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 think I uh, got something good here. Right on. Um, Jesse, they can get it from Amazon. Uh, and by the way, you can get the ebook, which all of the end notes are live links. So you can want to read the studies to show that uh, that this is not some sort of right wing talking point. This is reality of how the left is destroying the country. You can get it immediately and look at those links and read all the studies and everything. Um, if you want to get an autographed copy, you can get that from the WND Superstore. And the easiest way to get there is to go to snappingoftheamericanmind.com. And that takes you right to the page uh, with the snapping of the American mind and the marketing of evil and my, my other books. Who designed your book cover? I really like it. That was Mark Karras at WND. We had to go through a half dozen other covers that I didn't like first, <laughs> uh, but we finally got one that was, I think, really, really uh, very grabby. It is. It really is. Um, in the meantime, David, what would you advise to the American people who are stressed out at this point? Uh, they need to, you know, we, we need an awakening, Jesse, and it's kind of a, a cliche to say that, but we, we need to realize, and I know this is a theme of yours, and I've, I've read a lot of your book coming out because we, we published it. Yes. Uh, and you have a major theme which I'm happy to say is also a theme in my, uh, in the solution part of my book toward the end of we got to overcome anger yeah. because people don't realize that not only does all this crazy stuff going on make them angry, which is understandable because they're destroying the country, okay? Um, but the anger, causing the anger is is strategic. It's You, you are intended to become angry, and if... if you know, in my book, I quote from Saul Alinsky, but I do it in a different way. It's not just, well, you know, rule number five, get people ticked off at you and intimidate people. I give the psychological, spiritual underpinning. It doesn't work if people don't get mad. It, 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 let me put it the other way. It's totally dependent on your reaction, your overreaction, your yeah. anger. When you're angry and ticked off and upset and frustrated, 
you're you're not on your game. That's you're right. you're not thinking right. It's almost like you're it's like a temporary insanity. Jesse, think about this. The word mad means angry, it also means insane. Yes. There's a reason for that because you are a little bit insane when you're really mad. So that's that's the simplest and easiest thing to say and I talk about it and you talk about it in your book. There there it is very important to understand and you know what? Just realizing that they want you to be angry is helpful to if I warn you, I'm gonna say something that's gonna really tick you off, you're less likely to become ticked off. You're right. Because forewarned is forearmed. And that's that is the single biggest thing I can say. We we you know, we need to vote, we need to uh, you know, watch be careful how our kids are schooled, the influences them, all those things, but you know, everybody says that. We sensible people need to do that to protect their own. But we, we do need is the very foundational thing. They want us to be angry and upset and, and frustrated and, and, and snapping. And we need to frustrate them by saying, uh-uh, you know, you are insane. Okay, I'm not <laughs> doubting myself. Yeah. You guys are nuts. You've been doing this to us for 100 years. We're not, we're not taking it anymore. Uh, but but we, we can do it in a dignified way, and there's great power in that. That's right. You know, the unfortunate thing is there are men in churches that are teaching and have taught their congregation that anger is good and that you should learn to control your anger but you need the anger and 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 these people who have been taught that are very unhappy with the anger but they're trying to hold on to it because the preacher said it's good to have and i'm like no anger is the nature the spirit the identity of satan is evil there's nothing good in anger well you know jesse the christians i'm a christian you're a christian are always citing the, the, the scenario where Jesus threw the money changers out of the temple. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, you know, but there's different kinds of anger. Do you really think, you know, Christians listening to this, that Jesus was frustrated and, and upset and resentful and his mind was like running around like a squirrel cage? He was just, his, 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 you know, his mind was tangled up. He was so frustrated. And I don't think so. I think he was perfectly calm and clear-headed inside. Yeah. He said, what? You got to be kidding. Uh, okay. And, and he, he had to have a show of force to, to, because they were defiling his father's house and all that. But there, there is a, a righteous indignation where we stand up and say, excuse me, <laughs> can't do that. This is my country. Get out. Uh, that's different from being where we're so frustrated and angry, we burn ourselves out and, and we flip out and go and, you know, we, we I mean, in, in the worst cases, we go and commit violence. But even in the more, in the rest of the cases, we just, we go close down, we drop out, we stop voting, we stop yeah. paying attention to what's going on because we're so frustrated, we can't, Jesse, I know a lot of people that don't listen to the news anymore, don't vote, because it's so upsetting to them yeah. that... They, uh, they, they just, for their own peace of mind, they say, I, I can't watch it anymore. I can't stand Obama. Well, you know what? The bad guys win when the good guys stay home. That's right. One last point about anger. Now that I don't have it anymore, I've realized that a lot of, nearly all of the decisions I made prior to overcoming anger were bad decisions. And I made those bad decisions because I was making them in the darkness of my imagination. And I didn't know at the time that I, that that was going on. It wasn't until the anger was removed from me by God that I see, wow, no wonder my life was so messed up. I didn't, I couldn't see what I was doing. Yeah, I think that's part of why people love Ben Carson, because part of his story was that amazing story where he almost killed somebody when he was 15 he stabbed him and got stopped by a the knife got stopped by a belt buckle. He went into his bathroom and he said, Please God, take this horrible anger away from me. Yeah. You know, that story resonates with me and I think all all decent people it resonates with. And uh, that's like, wow, he's discovered something. That's yes. that's really cool. That's right. Off um we have a minute left. Who are you rooting for in this presidential race at this time? Uh Honestly, I get down on my knees and thank God if virtually any one of them became president over over Hillary. But I, I do kind of like Trump and Carson and uh, Cruz and the, the ones that the most of the public likes because they're the most real. They yeah. seem 
intuitive and talking from the heart and not rehearsed. David, we're out of time. Congratulations again on a great book. I know it's going to do well, and God bless you for what you're doing. Thanks, Jesse. Same to you. All right. Thanks for being with us. Okay. Back in a moment, folks. Thank you.